Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week, we will be talking about a Mr. Lag testing device, a quick update on the Splatterhouse core, the Nintendo 64 core, the Saturn core, and much more. So let's get to it. If you want to know just how much lag your display is adding to your Mr. setup, there is now an official lag tester for Mr. and it's called Mr. Laggy. It works on the same principle as the Time Sleuth. There are two parts to Mr. Laggy. One part is custom hardware that consists of a small PCB with a photo transistor that interfaces with a user port. The other part is a custom core that generates the video signal and captures measurements to let you know the time between the core sending a signal and the display outputting it. This comes thanks to core developer Wickerwaka. The core is already available for download and there are KiCad files that will help you build the hardware. It has gone on sale but is currently out of stock but restock is planned for the future. Here's a cool FPGA project dedicated to the NES. It's called the Nest Tang and it's powered by a small form factor FPGA board to replicate the NES. The project offers a cycle accurate NES core, game loading via micro SD cards, support for USB controllers, ACMI 720p output and more. All this for around $30 to $40. With its small size you can easily fit this almost anywhere. This is a really cool project and I would love to see it evolve into a handheld that can run different cores. Check out the GitHub to get more information on the project and to see how to build your own. Darren O and Attract 17 are planning to add Zero Team New to their Raiden DX implementation. This game isn't currently emulated in MAME because of some encryption on the V33 chip, so it's great to see it getting preserved. The Mars FPGA will feature an interchangeable front controller port module that will allow you to use original console controllers. The port is snack compatible and is a creative and sleek way to have the ports you need for your original controllers. And from the picture, it looks like we'll be having multiplayer snack support. The AVS from Retro USB is now back in stock. This is an FPGA NES console that takes original NES cartridges. If you want a detailed look at the AVS, Check out the video by My Life in Gaming. It will give you an idea if this is something for you. Ortego updated us on the progress for Splatterhouse. Sprites are now starting to work and the next task for the core is adding support for a custom PCM chip which is called a CUS30. Kuro is testing more HDMI to VGA DACs that can be used for direct video. Kuro has an excellent document testing out different DACs and letting us know which offer the best quality. Some high quality DACs that were tested are unfortunately not sold new anymore, so getting results for freely available DACs will be very helpful. Pixel Cherry Ninja did a Q&A with Pramod, the developer behind the Rising Core and the upcoming Williams Y and Z Unit cores. It's a really cool video if you have any interest in FPGA core development. For the Nintendo 64 core, we are updated on some games that were improved since the latest updates. Games that improved are Doom 64, Magical Tetris Challenge, The World Is Not Enough 007, Pilot Wing 64, Automobile Lamborghini, Starcraft 64, Glover, and F-Zero X. The developer also posted an article on Patreon going over the technical details of these recent fixes. His articles are always a great read and you always learn something new about the Nintendo 64's hardware. And noise alpha blending was added, which helps with the Mario disappearing effect in this video. The Saturn Core has had an important feature added. It can now load CD images in the CHD format thanks to ZAC4223. The CHD format offers smaller file sizes than other formats, therefore allowing you to store more games in the same amount of space. And a reminder that you can now download the Saturn Core if you have the update all script. Uber Yoji is a creator of several boot ROMs that will give you a cool splash screen for certain cores when you load them. Unfortunately, it looks like the boot ROM method of loading these ROMs will not be supported by Mr. in the future. Uber Yoji is asking users to test a new method of loading these boot ROMs by using MGL files. So, if you're a current user of these boot ROMs, Check out the post for instructions on using this new method. And if you haven't tried these boot ROMs, here are some quick examples of what you'll see when you load a core.
Shane Lynch created an alternate NES core that uses a PPU that was on Nintendo's PlayChoice 10 arcade hardware. This will actually make some NES games unplayable because of palette differences between the NES and the PlayChoice 10. Shane will not add this to the official core because this was more of a curiosity to see how games that use emphasis mode would look. Franken Graphics on Twitter has a post showing how big the differences are between the palettes. Mr. Adams has given us a couple of updates regarding some products. First, we are told that the next batch of Mr. Cade units are due in November. We are also notified that Mr. Cade Versus should be available this week. This is a cabinet linking service that will allow you to play single screen competitive or cooperative games with friends on multiple linked arcade cabinets. You can sign up for stock notification on the product page. Mr. Addons also has the Reflex Control Kits available for purchase. These are open source USB conversion kits that give original console controllers support for direct input, X input, switch and more. These kits are non-destructive and are PCB replacements. So if you want the original functionality back, all you have to do is just put back the original PCBs. Whistle's Remote Extension, a utility that allows you to control the mister, change mister settings, and more all from your phone, has now added the ability to switch INI files. You can obtain this tool and other useful tools by Whistle if you enable Whistle's extensions in the update all script. The Mistex project is a fork of Mister with the goal of being able to use whatever FPGA or ARM chip you want. This project now has a build root with a Raspberry Pi Zero. Everything compiles and seems to run fine, but it has yet to be connected to an FPGA. Keep in mind that the Mistex project is still in early development. On October 23rd, pre-assembled Atlantis boards for Mister will be available for $25 or $39 Australian dollars. All the necessary parts will be soldered. These kits will allow you to use a Mister on the PC case of your choice and will also give you the option of powering your Mister setup with an internal ATX power supply. Taki Udon is a big YouTuber that reviews many portable emulation devices and single board computers. He recently made a couple of posts about being in talks with a major Chinese manufacturer of handheld computers. They have an interest in developing an FPGA handheld that will be developer friendly and open source while being offered at a low cost. It was also mentioned that there's interest on developing a non-handheld full FPGA console with Mr. FPGA compatibility. Right now they're asking for community feedback and there's a Reddit thread where you can post your thoughts. Now let me tell you how I feel about this. I would love for there to be more competition for Analog Incorporated. It is frustrating to deal with their limited supply of devices. I personally want to purchase the original Analog Pocket, but the purchase process was a nightmare and was never able to secure one at the time. I did have better luck with the recently released Transparent Pocket, but other people weren't so lucky. I also feel that Mr. Compatibility is a must and the project should be open enough that the community can create hardware around it. What worries me is the low cost nature of the project. It was said that a 99 price tag is being targeted for the handheld. Since it was mentioned that a major Chinese handheld manufacturer is interested, they probably do have the ability to source an FPGA cheaply. But what worries me is the quality outside the FPGA. If you want to compete with analog, you cannot skimp on things like the D-pad, screen, comfort, and more. I wouldn't want to see a clone of a current ARM-based emulation handheld with an FPGA instead. So I hope the community feedback can drive it to what we want. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's a bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.